this event was supposed to wrap up at four. And if you take a look behind, you can still see large crowds gathered in front of City Hall. Trees are just snapped in half like toothpicks. And some of the houses in the area like this one completely obliterated. This protest started out you know, kind of small, a couple dozen people over at Emancipation Park. It has since mobilized. Businesses are still open, despite the fact many of them have boarded up ahead of Cristo Ball. And that fatal stabbing took place here in the parking lot of Walgreens, but that witness tells me he watched as the suspect pulled out a knife and threatened a handful of people just a half a block away. Basically, wear a mask or don't come inside. Not everyone is going to like this, but I'm told it is legal. And the best way to show you just how terrible this road is, is to take you down it. So here we go. Keith Nielsen doesn't even have keys to this office yet. He doesn't officially step into his new role as GOP chairman until August 3rd. But he told me today he's already in the hot seat. Things are in full swing here at the cookoff. Take a look at this. Teams already hard at work hoping to take that top spot in their designated categories. I need that teddy bear. Rosa Edwards combing through what's left of the home she's lived in for 20 years. I would not have survived had I been here. Hard to believe a woman and her 10-month-old grandchild made it out of this home with just a few cuts and scrapes. The wind was really loud. My windows fl fl uh, blew out. And then I, I just said, you know, whatever is God's will will happen. If I live, I live. Pinned underneath the trailer until a passerby heard her cries for help, Myra Jimenez now counting her blessings. Her neighbors not as fortunate. People did lose their lives behind where, from where I was standing. Three people reportedly killed in the tornado, at least 30 others injured. <laughs> The buzzing of chainsaws echoing throughout on Alaska, where about 300 homes are damaged, more than 40 destroyed. And we felt the whole house pick up and move. Stephen Farrows is one of them. Somebody was watching out for me. There's, you know, you look at this. We're lucky to be alive. The devastation likely the result of an EF2 tornado, says Dan Riley with the National Weather Service. Perhaps 120, 130 mile per hour winds, and we could rate it higher. We haven't looked at all the damage yet. The small, tight-knit community now leaning on one another to get by. I got my kids. Everything's going to be all right. This American flag still standing amid the chaos. That was the only thing we found in the rubble that was still there. A symbol of hope, says Jimenez, a sign of the future. No mask, no service. That's the policy here at Trudy's Hallmark store off Memorial Drive. We just think it's, you know, the right thing to do right now for the safety of not only the community, but our employees. The mask mandate, a hit with 99% of customers, says store owner Priya Shields. The other 1% summed up in this handful of hate mail. One person said that we were acting like uh, Hitler, like a German dictator. Um, another one said, essentially, you're asking customers to put a chain link fence in an effort to stop mosquitoes. Mask policies growing in popularity as more stores reopen. This Skechers store in Humble also requires face coverings. The bottoms have almost no tread left on them. Philip Adams shopping for a replacement pair of sneakers was denied uh, entry. It was infuriating. It was embarrassing, and I, yeah, I was completely humiliated. Adam says his COPD makes wearing a mask dangerous, bringing his oxygen levels too low. I then told the manager that it was a violation of federal law, the Americans with Disabilities Act, Title III to be exact, and he still didn't want to hear it. He's since filed an ADA discrimination complaint with the U.S. Department of Justice. Attorney Stephen Barth doesn't think question. it'll stick. Typically, uh, one person's civil rights ends where another's began. For a business owner to establish that guests must wear masks, that is absolutely okay under the law, and it's absolutely okay to enforce that. So there you have it for the trust index. It is legal for business owners to require you to wear a mask while you are inside. Think of it like restaurants, perhaps, requiring customers not to smoke or wear a certain dress code. It's the same kind of thing. Reporting live from the Memorial Area, Hannah McKenzie, KPRC, Channel 2 News.
With 130 mile per hour wind gusts, Michael ripped through Panama City. We were right there in that bathtub. I was, I was on top of my mom. And I was looking at my husband thinking that the door was going to bust open and suck him out. Well, it did sound like a freight train. Imagine living through that. Now imagine living through it like this. Deaf since birth, that was Robert Roth's reality as the Category 4 hurricane pounded his Bay Villa apartment. He's saying that the water level came up to right here, so his whole apartment was flooded. The storm even tearing a hole in his ceiling. He was staying in the bathroom when the storm came through. By what little sign language I do know. Did you think you were going to die? And through notes, Roth gave me his story. A friend who lives next door has been helping him communicate with people and, and try to get the resources he needs. He's been trying to file a claim with FEMA, but with long lines and a curfew in place, he's been turned away the last few days, forced to stay here in apartment number seven. The rest of the Bayville apartment residents aren't much better off. 25 years ago, they added this upstairs. When they added the upstairs, obviously, it probably wasn't a whole lot of code and all that. The owner of the complex, Joe Doherty, taking me on a tour, showed me what's left of the second floor, where several people were seeking shelter. Can you imagine what it would be like to ride out the storm in there? No, no, no I can't. No, I really can't. I couldn't even begin to imagine. Roth, counting his blessings he survived, is now focused on moving on. But with no running water, no electricity, and no real method of communication, it's extremely challenging. Thank you.